Let's learn in this video how to persist data inside an AKS Azure Kubernetes Service Cluster. When we want to save data inside our cluster, we can save that data inside the pod itself. But that is not always a good idea because that data will be deleted and will be lost because those containers or those pods are ephemeral. Each time they get recreated, restarted or rebooted, we might lose that data inside that pod. So we should, so we should always save or and persist that data outside the pod itself. If we, we want to connect to a database or if we have some uh, files, then we should persist that data outside the pods. How to achieve that? So we have actually multiple options available in, uh, in Kubernetes. So typically we can use the disk. And in the context of Azure, here we'll be talking about AKS today. AKS, uh, let's say storage. We can benefit from the Azure ecosystem. So within the storage options that we can use here, we have the Azure files, the Azure file share, or also the Azure blob. Those are good options because they provide uh, multiple read-write uh, features. And we have also a third option that we'll be talking about today that is using the Azure disk. So let's see how that works within AKS. So in my AKS cluster, I might have actually one or multiple VMs. So those are my worker nodes. Let's say here I have, for example, my worker node number one. This is my first node node number one and maybe I have also a second node inside my cluster so let's call this one node number two and within those nodes I might have applications that want to connect to persisted data so let's say for example here I would have a pod let's call this one pod one and then I might have pod number two And that pod wants to connect to uh, persistent data, to the Azure disk. So within the Kubernetes YAML files, we can create the persistent volume and also the persistent volume claims in order to provision that Azure disk. So that's the way to create those resources. First, of course, we would have the storage class. And then we define the persistent volume. And then we would have the persistent volume claim. Okay, those are the different objects that will describe the configuration of the Azure disk that we want to create. And then that's going to create the Azure disk for me. So from here, I would have that Azure disk provisioned for me using that API from within the Azure uh, AKS cluster. So the storage class will describe, for example, uh, the type of the Azure disk, if it's a standard premium uh, offering and so on. And then the persistent volume will describe the size and then the claim that's going to be used or uh, that's the way for the pod to request to use that persistent volume. So then um, my pod right here will be able to connect to that Azure disk. OK, so it will do like this and it will go to mount that volume into the pod so that my application running inside that pod right here will be able to access that Azure disk that will be mounted into a volume, let's say, for example, uh, something like uh, MNT, for example, Azure disk. And then my app could access that a folder right here and it could write the database file into here. So from there, I will have my uh, database, for example. Great. So in Azure, the Azure disk, actually, that's as by, de by uh, default, that's a zoner resource. Zoner resource means that that disk will live inside an availability zone and it will be replicated three times by default. So we have those three replica 
available by default. So we would have replica number one, and then the replica number two, and we would have also a third replica of the data inside that disk so that database file actually will live inside those three uh, disks right here three replica so we would have that uh, file available right here let's say slash database So that replication is used for high availability to make sure that if uh, so that data uh, is redundant and if we lose one replica, then the other replica will be available for us. And it's Azure who will manage this for us. So as a user in Azure, I don't have access to these three replicas. They will be managed by Azure itself when I have a failure in the disk. So an Azure disk by default will use the read write once. Okay, so that's the uh, default mode, read write uh, once. It means only one node could access that disk or that disk will be mounted to one single node from my cluster. So if, if it's mounted here through the node number two, it cannot be mounted to the node number three. That's impossible. However, all the pods from within the node number one where it's bound, they will be able to access that Azure disk. So here, if I have my pod one, I can also mount my pod two to that exact same uh, disk right here. So both pods right here will be able to uh, read and write into that disk. But again here, only one single pod will be able to write at the time. So if it's now pod one is writing, pod two will not be able to write, okay? So it's only a read write once. So that's the default configuration of the disk along with those three replica that will be actually created uh, three times, three replica. They will be created within the same availability zone. So by default, it uses read write once and it will use also the LRS mode. It means that's local redundant storage. Local redundant storage means that those three replica will live inside the same availability zone. That is good if I have all my nodes or all my pods that wants to connect to the disk are available within one single availability zone. But in AKS, it's always recommended to use and to leverage the availability zones that we have in Azure. Remember, in Azure, an availability zone, that's a group of one or multiple data centers that have independent cooling, electricity, and so on. And those availability zones are far away from each other from, let's say, 5 to 20 kilometers on average. So if one availability zone gets down, then the other two availability zones will be able to uh, take those workloads and to resume running that application. So that's a nice way to have high availability for our applications. And in AKS, we are encouraged to use or to leverage that availability zones. It means that my nodes will be spread against multiple availability zones. So here, for example, if I have node one, node two in one availability zone or in two different availability zones, actually I can have also a third node that will run inside another availability zone from here. So I can add that node number three and for each node it will have its own or to live in its own availability zone right here so i'll add this line right here to say that's gonna be my availability zone let's call it az1 and then node number two will live inside an az number two and for the node 3, it will live inside another availability zone. Let's call it AZ number 3. So we said earlier with LRS that Azure Disk could be uh, mounted to one single node. But if I'm here using that LRS, that node, or if it will fail, it, will, it could be um, mounted to another node. If that pod, for example, go and get, gets rescheduled into another node right here, let's say that pod will come to here. That's my pod 
number one then i need also to mount that azure disk to that pod number one that azure disk should go to be mounted in, into this node number two so because with lrs that azure disk will live inside one single availability zone let's say at first that's the availability zone number one and if my pod go to another availability zone then my azure disk will not be able to be uh, mounted into another availability zone that's why we say the azure disk is by default zonal resource so now to um, to overcome this um, uh, this uh, constraint we have another offering for the azure disk so as we have as we did have before the lrs option now we have another option that is called zrs zrs stands for zone redundant storage okay with zone redundant storage means that here i will still have three replica for my azure disk replica number one two and three but those three replica now the difference is that they will live inside different availability zones so in each availability zone i would have a replica right here that's my az1 the same thing will get for my az2 and now the replica number three will be stored or saved inside the availability zone number three Remember, those are three replica. To access the disk, we go through this component right here, which is, let's say, it's like an API that will give us access to that Azure disk replica, where here, if we write uh, to this uh, API, then that write data will be synchronized uh, into those different uh, replicas. So here it will go to do a read and write, or let's say, uh, sync into those replica. So with ZRS now, if I need to use that Azure disk, if I need to unmount it from availability zone one and use it in availability zone number three, that would be possible finally using the ZRS option. So from here, I can go to uh, unmount that Azure disk from here because I still can mount it only to one single node. Okay, so I should first go to unmount it from the uh, first node and then I make it available to the second mo node so I can go here to mount it again here to the second node to give it access to the pod uh, to that Azure pod and in that case because it's now uh, use it in availability zone number two so it will use actively the, uh, the the replica or that Azure disk within the availability zone number two and then it will go to replicate that data against the uh, other uh, replica of course that will have some performance um, uh, some performance degradation when compared with the lrs okay because with lrs we just write to one single availability zones so but that uh, additional uh, or that performance issue is that uh, let's say it's uh, at the end it, it should be something uh, acceptable Great, so here we're talking about the uh, LRS disk, the ZRS disk that will enable to, the disk to be available in different availability zones. And we still have the last uh, feature for Azure disk, the last as per today, that is the shared disk. What is the problem that the shared disk will solve? So from here, we... Uh, even if we use multiple availability zones, that Azure disk could be mounted only to one single node right here. So if it's used within the availability zone uh, number two, um, it could be only mounted to one single node. It still could be mounted with, to multiple pods within that node number two, but it's only one single node at a time. So now we want that Azure Disk to be available in, among, different, uh, among um, different nodes. So from here, we, if we enable that Azure uh, Disk, that shared uh, disk right here, if we make this disk share it. So in, co in uh, Kubernetes, we can make that disk shared by uh, changing inside the storage class, we change the type to be a uh, block, okay? to use uh, the block and then we can specify a value for the max shares okay so we would here have here uh, type a block and then uh, we would have another value for max shares 
max shares means how many nodes could be uh, could use that Azure disk or that Azure disk could be mounted to how many nodes. So if I specify here three, for example, that means that Azure disk could be mounted into the first node, second and three nodes at a time. And all the three nodes will be able to access that Azure disk. So from here, that disk could be mounted to the node number three. So here, if I have some uh, pods right here, let's say this is pod number four, then he will be able to access that uh, Azure disk. And those three VMs will be able to access that Azure disk at the same time. And of course, here we can um, use both the shared disk with LRS. It means that uh, Azure disk will be shared among multiple VMs, but inside the same availability zones. Or I can also use it with ZRS. And it means that I can share that Azure disk with multiple VMs inside another uh, or inside different availability zones. But still here, that Azure disk will always rely on read write once. If, even if it's here with uh, that uh, uh, shared disk, we use the read write many. So that attribute actually is used just to let the Azure disk be mounted to multiple uh, VMs or multiple nodes within my Kubernetes cluster. But in reality, only one single node uh, could or one single pod could write into the Azure disk. The other uh, pods will be able to read only. And then it's up to uh, the application to uh, manage how they synchronize the read write into that Azure disk.